Hello, and welcome to this episode of All Ears English. In today's episode, we have a guest. We have Hadar Shemesh from the Influency Podcast, and she also has a YouTube channel called The Accents Way with Hadar Shemesh. So in today's episode, we're talking about pronunciation. It can be frustrating when you learn a new skill, a new pronunciation sound, and you're not able to implement it and see the results in real conversations. There are some things you need to do first. So in today's episode, Hadar will show us her five-step system for learning pronunciation and then making sure that you are able to implement it in a real conversation. So guys, I hope you enjoy this episode and let's get started. Hello, Hadar. How are you today? So excited to have you on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime. Guys, I'm excited to introduce our guest for today, Hadar Shemesh. She's on the show from the Influency Podcast. Tell us a little bit about where you're from, Hadar, and what you're doing in the ESL world. Okay, so... Um as you said, my name is Hadar, pronounced it perfectly, and I live in <laughs> Tel Aviv, Israel, and I'm a, a fluency coach and a speech and pronunciation coach, and I'm a non-native speaker of English, so actually, um, I am teaching everyone what I have learned myself, and that's it. I live in Israel, and I work all around the world online. Awesome. I find it so inspiring, you know, that you have, you have learned English and now you're able to teach us from that experience. I think as a native speaker, we may take it for granted sometimes, mm -hmm. right? We don't know how we've learned our native language. And so I appreciate this perspective. This is awesome. And today, Hadar, you're going to tell us about how our listeners can take their pronunciation learning out into the real world. Is that right? Exactly. Have you seen this, exactly. this struggle for listeners, for your students? Absolutely. So first of all, a lot of people understand that pronunciation is important, but they don't know exactly how they can actually use it and um, integrate it into their real life speech. Yeah. Also, I see a very common mistake that people think that, okay, once they learn a certain sound on YouTube or in a private coaching mm -hmm. session, they feel like, okay, now I've mastered it. I know how to use it. And they expect themselves to use it, you know, effortlessly when they, they're speaking and they get really frustrated with themselves for not being able to do that. Absolutely. And I want to say that the part about learning how to make a sound is just the first step, right? Yes. Or maybe second step. <clears throat> and most of the work is about the implementation and the repetition. I and that, that part is usually overlooked. I so I want to talk about that today. Yeah, I'm glad you're here today to talk about this. This is so fraught because again, when we put so much time into something, right, and we think it should work, right? We think it should work because right. everything else we can kind of learn it and make it happen most of the time. But language is a special case. <laughs> so I, yeah. I understand Hadar, that you have kind of a framework that you've been working with students on that seems to work based on student experience. Can you show our listeners how they would go about making sure they learn the pronunciation sounds correctly and then really getting out there, putting it into action? How can we do it? Absolutely. So first of all, the, f the most important step is perception. Okay. That means that before even attempting at trying to pronounce a certain sound, it is so important to be able to hear it and to recognize it. Okay. Why am I saying that? Because if um, someone is doesn't have a certain sound in their native language, it's very likely that they won't even hear the nuances of that sound or they'll hear it, but their brain will analyze it as a different sound. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that what they're hearing is not exactly how they categorize it or how they perceive it in their brain. So they need to perceive it as a new sound. And as such, that means that they need to kind of like treat it dif differently in how they think about it and yeah. use it. Yeah, so perception sense. is really important. Yeah. And, and also sometimes there are very subtle nuances in English, like sheep, ship, pool, mm -hmm. pull, mm -hmm. bed, bad, yes. like, you know, vowel sounds that don't exist in many different yes. languages, like two different, very close vowel sounds. Mm -hmm. And then people usually merge them. So before you're even sure. trying to make them they need to hear the difference. Yeah, exactly. Again, like you said, we can't hear what we don't know. 
And that's maybe yeah. that's why it's so intense for beginners to really understand fast, uh, natural English, because if you don't have a sense of any of those sounds, you don't know what you're listening for. I love that. Right. I love that. Okay. Exactly. And, and one of the things about improving your, your listening skills and understanding native speakers better is like, you ha it has to go through your mouth. Yes. When you do it, then this is why pronunciation is so important because when you do it, you're able to understand it better too. Yeah, that makes total sense. Okay, so this is an important first step. I feel like it's kind of the foundation, building our house here. Um, all right, Absolutely. so perceptions number one, Hadar, what will be the next one then? Well, the next one is very simple pronunciation. It's the production of the sound. It's very technical. It's ex what you do exactly with your lips, with your tongue, with your jaw, um, with the with your cheeks, everything about your mouth. And Every human being can pronounce every, any possible sound in, you know, any language. It's just a matter of understanding what to do with your articulation organs, which is yeah. what I discussed, right? So to understand, like, let's say you want to practice or improve your R in mm -hmm. American English. So you need to know what the tongue does, right? Yes. So you pull the tongue back, the sides of the tongue touch the sides of the teeth, the lips need to round, the tip of the tongue shouldn't touch anything. So we have these steps that you need to go through. And then ideally you practice it a bit and then you get to the right sound. Okay. Do you recommend that students kind of mimic, they, they watch someone pronouncing it and they kind of try to mirror what they're seeing, the way it's being formed in the mouth? Or is there, is it more about understanding where to place the tongue and move the lips? How would you go about it? That is such a great question because it really depends. Okay. Different learners learn and improve differently, right? Yes. So sometimes I would be like explaining to a student what they need to do and they'd be like, what? <laughs> and then I just say the sound and yeah. they'd be like, oh, you know, and repeat it and imitate it quickly. Others need to see a diagram and see exactly yes. what the tongue is doing, right? Others I need to, the, the entire explanation. Yep. And some just need a lot of examples and repetition and just, you know, I help them fine tune it by giving them some more imageries or notes. So like, you know, sometimes I say stuff like, imagine like you have a hot potato in your mouth, right? Okay. For some people it would be like, what? And for others, <laughs> boom, you know, yeah, like that's that. what, exactly. <laughs> okay. So it really depends. And as a coach, I try to go back and forth and see okay. what resonates with the student and what gets them to make that sound. Good. Uh, Good. And then I just continue with that. Yeah. That's so important because there's not one way of learning to make these sounds. Everyone learns in a different way. And that's so key to really speak to students where they're at, how they learn. I love it. Okay. So we're at the Absolutely. practice stage. Hadar, so then what would be the next step once we've done perception and pronounce, I guess. And then what, what would be the next step? Well, the next step is building right. pronunciation confidence, okay. which is also practice, right? Got it. So basically practicing the sound. Now, practicing the sound doesn't mean to just say 10 words with the same sound and that's it. Right. So you want to be very intentional about the practice. A lot of people practice and drill words, but they repeat the same patterns that they bring over from their native language. Of course. So for example, going back to the R, let's say you're a Spanish speaker, and then you have a tendency of saying R instead of R, so right instead of right. Right. Um, so you know how to say the R, maybe you have practiced it before, but then you drill sounds and you keep saying run, red, mm -hmm. right? And you keep tapping that tongue against the upper palate. Yeah. And you don't even notice. So, and then you just perpetuate that mistake and you build, you build the muscle memory of the mistake, mistake, right? Oh, like gosh. of the, it's not a mistake, but it's a mispronunciation, let's say, right? Like yep. it's not the American R yep. um, or the British R. So as a result, like it's just you, uh, the person might be practicing, but without seeing the results that they're after because the practice wasn't intentional. Yes. So you want to make sure that when you practice, you have some guidance or tools it, yeah. and it doesn't mean that you have to go and seek for coaching, yeah. but you need to kind of like, just pay attention to look in the mirror, to feel your tongue if needed, to yeah. record yourself, see if it's different. If it mm -hmm. feels too comfortable, mm -hmm. usually you're going back to patterns, right? Yeah. If it feels weird and yeah. artificial, you're probably on the right track because doing something right. different will make you feel a little, you know, it's going to feel a little awkward, but you practice it enough times yeah. and then you make it your own. I love that. That's so important. Muscle memory is so powerful in both ways. <laughs> 
we do it wrong, we're teaching ourselves very bad habits yes. that are getting cemented, right? I mean, I know this in the opposite exactly. direction of having studied Spanish for a long time and having lived a little bit in Latin America and then now starting to lose my accent, unfortunately. And so I'm going in the opposite direction. And so I can feel that when I pronounce Spanish words, it just doesn't feel natural anymore. Um, and so it can happen in both, in both ways, for sure. And it's also the muscles, right? Let's not forget the that these muscles. are muscles. So you yeah. not need to strengthen them. It's not yes. like, okay, yes. you're not going to the gym for two years. How would you expect to be in shape, right? Exactly. I mean, we can build new muscle fibers in our biceps after a few weeks at the gym. So why couldn't we do it with our mouths with making those sounds? I love that mentality. Exactly. Exactly. It, it should be addressed exactly the same way. I love it. And also it's it. like ongoing work. Like you say, yeah. you know, you haven't done it in a while, mm -hmm. you get rusty yeah. and then you're not as sharp exactly. and it doesn't feel as smooth and effortless. Yeah. We have to nurture this skill a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Okay. Absolutely. So then this is great. So I love this framework. So then what's our next step? I feel like there are a couple more steps to really make sure we bring it out there with, uh, with out in a conversation really. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you need to start implementing what you have practiced. Let's assume that you've practiced the R and you were intentional about it and you drilled it in words and phrases and sentences and you tackled challenging transitions. And now, you, but you still, you feel that you're still not using it in a conversation, right? Okay. It's not there for you. You go back to your old habits. So the next step is still like, that's a buffer step, which is, okay, don't use it yet in real life. Life because there's mm -hmm. the whole aspect of judgment and then you think about your English too yeah. and about, you know, how to structure the sentence and vocabulary. There's a lot that goes into it. So you want to make it automatic, okay. but also it doesn't happen on its own. Mm -hmm. um, so the next step would be to practice on your own. So to record yourself speaking freely or to read out loud, but to focus on one or two sounds. And yeah. to make sure that you are actually using them, right? So to start using it, not in drills, but in real, you know, um, in real conversation. But yeah. I recommend that it's still you on your own, right? Like yes. not you speaking to other people. So there's less judgment and more permission. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. right? So because people are a lot better. <laughs> you know, they say that after there was a research that showed that people who have a glass of wine, their pronunciation improves <laughs> because not that I'm, I'm, sure. I'm not sure. that I'm uh, <laughs> encouraging people to consume alcohol, but it says that like when you're less judgmental, there is more freedom, yeah. especially when it comes to pronunciation and English and fluency in general. Interesting. Yeah. That is such an interesting insight. Yeah. You know, I think this is a step that a lot of students skip and this may be the problem, right? They go from classroom right. learning, drilling to let's go into the middle of a conversation in a crowded nightclub yes. or party and I should be able to do it. Right. And of course yeah. not. Yeah. So I like that you're adding in this step. Right. And so you do it on your own, but you simulate like a real conversation, but you're still mm -hmm. safe. And yes. ideally, if you record yourself, I would recommend to listen back to it and to observe your performance. So good. Going back to, you know, the physical activity, even athletes, you know, when they're on the field and they, you know, after a game, they will watch the videos of the game and see their performance. Because when you're in your body doing whatever it is, when you're on the field, then you're not aware of many of the things or many patterns that you, um, that you tend to yeah. go into. Yep. And when you listen back to it, like listen to your recording, you can notice a lot of things and then it's a lot easier to, to decide if you want to keep it or change it. To tweak from there. Yeah, that makes total yeah. sense. Okay. So now after we've done all of this, we've learned the sounds, we've pronounced them, we've done our, our practice recording ourselves, listening for sounds. What do we do next? I'm guessing that we want to try then, to use it now. <laughs> the yeah, so you go into the real world <laughs> <laughs> and then, and, and then, you know, so on one hand, if you've done all of that, a lot of the work will show up for you. Yeah. Spontaneously. That's the great part about practicing or building pronunciation confidence. Cool, that cool. it's going to show up for you. And sometimes you won't even notice that it's yes. there. You'll Oof. start getting feedback from people, right? That's fantastic. Yeah. And but but if you want to really, you know, seal the deal, then use it intentionally. Every time focus on, as I said, not everything, not don't try to, to integrate everything that you've learned. That's just mm -hmm. not going that's gonna make you feel overwhelmed and frustrated. So yep. let's say, you know, you worked on R and intonation and TH. So you say, okay, you go into a conversation or a meeting and 
probably, it shouldn't be the most important meeting of your career, right? <laughs> right? So you go into a meeting and you have that small talk at the beginning, be intentional about using one or two sounds that you've learned and you've practiced because when you're aware of it and you have that like, you know, voice in the back of your head saying, R, or remember the R, then it's easier to integrate it. And then you, you become confident speaking to other people using those sounds. Yeah, I love it. I love that we're isolating sounds too, because I think a lot of students just want to improve all of their pronunciation all at one time and go into that meeting, be able to pronounce everything perfectly, which is completely unrealistic, right? right? It's just not right. possible, guys. So this is a really good strategy. Isolate a couple of sounds, go into that meeting and only judge yourself based on how well you do with those sounds, nothing else, right? Adar? Yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. I love it. Do you find that most of your students that you work with are learning American English or British English or Australian English? What is the go-to pronunciation, the accent that they look for? That's a good question. Uh, I think I mostly attract American uh, students who are more into American pronunciation, but I have a lot of students who also live in the UK and Australia. Okay. And then I just help them understand how to tweak it a little bit. But to be honest, it's more about their confidence yes. and being able to be clear, right? So it's less about, mm. oh, sound like an American, sound like a British yeah. speaker. So it's just like understand what are the sounds that are, um, that are preventing you from being clear and delivering your message confidently, right? Or that. clearly. And it's not just pronunciation. It's also prosody, intonation, rhythm, stress, all of that. Yes. So more than like learning. Learning a certain accent, we learn the building blocks of mm. spoken English, right? Whatever dialect that is. Because the yeah. R is the same. You know, it's just like there are a few features. It is dropped in British English or Australian English. But yeah. it's mainly, you know, the key sounds, the most important sounds are the same across yeah. all languages, across all dialects, you know. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So, so, awesome. so that's, that's important to remember. So I bet our listeners are going to want to hear more from you, Hadar. So let us know where we can find you, find your podcast, or where should our listeners go to learn more? Because this is really good stuff that we don't dive into quite as much on All Ears English, but I want to encourage our listeners to pursue this more. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I would love to have um, your listeners come and join me. Um, my website is hadarshemesh.com, and they can come and tune in to the Influency Podcast on okay. whatever platform you prefer. You're on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts, all the places. Yeah. Is that right? Okay, yes. great. So guys, go and find the Influency Podcast with Hadar Shemesh. And thank you so much, Hadar, for joining us today. This has been fantastic. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you so, so much. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. See you soon.